Welcome back, everybody. We're here today with our first Cabral host call of the weekend. Thanks so much for joining me here on the Cabral Concept. On the weekends, we call these our Cabral host calls, where we answer our community's questions, typically getting to a half a dozen on Saturdays and a half dozen on Sundays. And uh, really just a great time to check in with the community, see what questions there are. And also, as I always love to do to start the show, let you know that it's usually around a 10 to 12 week time frame to get your question read live on the air just because we have so many questions come in. But you can get same day answers to your questions by simply heading on over to cabralsupportgroup.com. It's a free private Facebook group. You don't even have to be on Facebook. You can just literally use the group if you'd like and uh, you can get questions to your answer pretty much same day. All things wellness, weight loss, anti-aging, and so much more. Weight gain, again, there's any category you want. Happy to help with that. If I don't have the answer, I'll tell you I don't have the answer. You know, I'm always truthful with you, try to give you an unbiased perspective, which is exactly what I would want, right? And I give you the answer that I would give to my wife, my kids, my parents, my siblings, right? Anyone in my private practice, um, I don't give a different answer just because this is over a podcast. Now, the last thing I want to share with you is that I can't give you any medical advice, medical treatment plans, medical cures, medical diagnosis. That's illegal. We would never do that over a podcast. All right, let's get started. First question today is from Kerry. Kerry says, hi, Dr. Paul. Love your podcast. I'm curious. I have psoriasis and I'm wondering if I should do a food allergy test. How accurate are the tests and what test do you recommend if not the food allergy? Thank you so much. All right, big difference between a food allergy and a food sensitivity. Food allergies are going to cause things such as anaphylaxis, and they're very potentially dangerous. Peanuts is a good example, sometimes strawberries, sometimes other things, obviously, as well. Well, what we look for are food sensitivities. They create inflammation, they create skin rashes, they create headaches, they create migraines, they create all sorts of different issues in the body. So we run what's called an IgG food sensitivity test. The reason we like that is it shows a delayed response in the body. So food that you eat 24 to 72 hours uh, before previous will show up in the body. So let me give you a better example. Let's say you eat um, lobster, right? And you don't have an immediate reaction, which would be an IgE or an IgA. But instead, you have a reaction two days later in terms of like brain fog, uh, skin rash, like psoriasis, we'll say, uh, and you don't know what it's from. So an Ig. G test, immunoglobulin G, will actually show you what foods you have a delayed response to. Now, I answered a question on last week's show, if you want to check it out, on just kind of like debates about food sensitivity tests. Um, I've seen great efficacy in my practice, but I'll let you know, it's not the end all be all. We always recommend for psoriasis, the big five. And ideally, if you can, adding on the bacteria and parasite stool test. In my practice, and I've seen a lot of people with psoriasis, I look at it as an autoimmune issue, again, no diagnosis, and I look at it as one part gut-based issues, one part stress. Now, it can absolutely be heavy metals, there can be other causes, but I've almost always found a direct connection between some type of intestinal permeability from either SIBO or candida overgrowth uh, or uh, maybe even parasites or H. pylori. I've always found a stress component as well. So that's that's where I start, and that's how we help people. And we've helped many, many people with psoriasis. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, and again, you can go find all the labs at stephencabral.com slash shop. stephencabral.com slash shop. That will take you actually over to Equal Life. It'll show you labs, um, protocols. Like you'll be able to find everything right there. All right, Brianna's up next. Hi, Dr. Paul. I was wondering if there was any science reason behind moles and why some people get so many. I feel like as I've gotten older, I've gotten more and more and wish there was a way to get rid of them. Besides sun exposure, is there a cause or deficiency of some sport, sort? Are there any ways to get rid of them? Thanks so much for all that you do. So I've um, talked about this actually a few times. I've actually talked about it like on a previous podcast, something called Cherry ingiomas, like they have different names, but it's little red dots you get kind of as you get older as well with some people. And what I wanted to share with that show is what I would also share with mold is that, yes, there's a big tie with sun. There's no doubt about it. But there is also a tie with a decrease in stem cells. So the body's ability to like repair the skin right? As quickly as possible. There's also a tie to weakening of detoxification. And there is also uh, what is called, well, well, I don't want to get too deep on this. Um, I've talked about this. I have a whole podcast on it, like the disposable soma theory. is like when you're younger, you get sun exposure, you can definitely get sunburned. 
but you're not getting as much of the wrinkles, the fine lines, um, or you know maybe even things like melanoma, etc. And the reason is is that your body is better able to deal with an a, a challenge, an onslaught, an injury, right? When you get sun, it's actually good for the body, right? Because it's helping to produce more vitamin D. It's improving sulfur-based detox pathways and, and much more, much, much more, like neurochemicals, neuro uh, endorphins, uh, neurotransmitters, all, all those good things. Okay, so we know that we need it, but it does create damage on the skin. That skin then improves melanin production, not, it's not necessarily damage, but it causes the body to produce more melanin to protect itself against the sun. Just like weightlifting is actually a protection, like building muscle against weightlifting is a protection against lifting heavier weights. Like your body's like, okay, we have to do this. Well, we're going to build bigger muscle then. Like that's progressive overload. So without getting too complex in the science is that when you're younger, your body has more reserves, vital reserves as I call them, to be able, and some of those are stem cells, some of it's collagen production, and some of it's vitamin C, zinc, all these things, to be able to better repair. And as you get older, you're not. And part of those signs then are the wrinkles and fine lines and the hair loss and the sagging skin, the, those types of things. And it comes as we're getting older. How do we kind of combat against that? It's all the things that I teach inside of high performance health. I've taught about them in the rain barrel effect. We keep our bodies more level at a better level of homeostasis. So the diet, the exercise, the stress reduction, doing things like the daily foundational protocol, getting all the vitamins and minerals and omega-3s that you need. It's all of the things, right, to be able to keep the body healthy and replace the deficiencies and help to remove those toxicities. So not a simple answer. I wish there was. I mean, if there was a simple answer, I would absolutely give you the simple answer. If you're watching this on YouTube, if if you know a simple answer to <clears throat> reducing mole growth as you get older, to reducing the little red dots, the little cherry angiomas as you get older, feel free to drop it in the, um, in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. But besides like bromelain and a few other things that's been speculated, uh, there's, there's not a lot of great evidence except, except for all the evidence that I just gave you. So hopefully that was helpful. Kind of a long answer, but I hope it was helpful. Uh, Audrey's up next. Hi, Dr. Brawl. Two questions here. I listen to your podcast on branched chain amino acids found in food. I wanted your opinion on supplementing with it. I know Equal Life does not carry them, so I was just curious why. And number two. I've heard, oh, okay, let me get to your first question. Yes, you're right. We do not carry branched amino acid, uh, acids. Um, typically, leucine, valine, isoleucine. Um, you could put others inside of technically not branched chain, but you could get more amino acids that are very potent for the body, um, such as arginine and, and others as well. But I've done so much work into longevity and anti-aging now that the, the problem is this. So... If you want to take branch chain amino acids because you want to repair your muscles and build bigger muscle faster, they will help with that. Like there's no, like, I'm not going to deny that. Again, my, my goal is the truth. Like it's true veritas, like going after what is really the truth. The truth is if you take in more protein and you take in more branch chain amino acids, you're going to be able to um, improve overall muscle. You are. Like you're going to be able to improve overall repair. The problem is this. They're going to greater push what is called mTOR and not for allow as much uh, what is called AMPK and autophagy. And if you're trying your best to live as long as possible, not get cancer and other things, again, there's no, there's no um, get out of jail free card as they have in Monopoly, right, for cancer. People get cancer, like, and it's oftentimes you just don't know why. Yes, there's a genetic component. You might have been exposed to something. You might have been, it might be stress. Like it's so many different things. But all you can do is do your best. And so for me, I took branched chain amino acids when I was in my early 20s because my goal was to put on a lot of muscle. And I did it. I got up to about 200 pounds at five foot eight. It's a lot of muscle on five foot eight in my frame. So I would never do it again because now my goal is different. My goal is longevity. And so I can't. They're, they're, I can't do both. I can't be 200 pounds at my size and also say, yeah, I'm also working on longevity. It, it's just, there's an inverse to those two. So hopefully that was helpful. I'm not against it. It works, no doubt about it. Just, I always, I teach this inside of HPH. What are you optimizing for, right? If you're optimizing for the most muscle possible and fastest recovery, then yes, you take branched chain amino acids, most likely uh, before and after your workouts if you want to preserve, work, uh, preserve muscle for sure, right? Or before your workout and maybe... Um, before bed. So like, I'll let you decide that. Okay. Uh, number two is I've been hearing lots of conflicting evidence that taking collagen doesn't work. 
Uh, can you explain how collagen actually benefits the body? Thanks so much. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to help with this. Well, so, you know, it's always like there's truth in both camps. And that's the problem is like people just dig so deep into one camp that they, they can't see the truth in the other. And so collagen actually does work. Um, there's lots of efficacious studies on it. But it's like, what are you looking for it to do? Because collagen is not a complete protein. Like that, that's the issue. And so if you're ever trying to choose between protein and collagen, well, I'm choosing protein like every day of the week. But saying, oh, this is our collagen protein, I'd be careful with that because it's really not a great protein. It's a great collagen. Like it's just different. And so that's how I look at it. You know, there's the daily foundational protocol, which is the daily nutritional support, the daily fruit and vegetable blend, the omega-3 support, the daily probiotic, right? Like, and, and you can add on the enzymes if you want. Like, that's what the body needs. The body needs that. You can get collagen through food. You can get collagen through different ways. But also, collagen is built up not through collagen alone. And that's why people are taking collagen, which they're doing. But they're not taking in something like the daily nutritional support, which gives you the glutamine, gives you the zinc, gives you the B vitamins, gives you the vitamin C, yeah, you're not going to be able to rebuild the hair, skin, and nails, which is what collagen helps to do. So, you know, that's why you have to start with the foundation. You know, people are looking to take uh, just B12 for energy. Okay, yeah, B12 is a great product, but you, I hope that you're taking all the other B vitamins and your vitamin C and your, your I mean, like, I hope that you're doing all those things, getting that protein. So collagen works. It doesn't work in a silo. And... Um, we use three patented versions of collagen, which have scientifically proven to work. So I can't say every collagen works. Um, although, I mean, when you're taking in collagen, you're, you're helping to rebuild. So what I would say is this. Uh, we used Tenexian, Fortigel, and Mobily. And you can look those up. Again, like it's not exclusive to us. We use them. It's called Advanced Collagen Support over at stephencabal.com slash shop. And again, you don't have to purchase anything there. I, mean, I just, I want you to know that. I just want you to know like what's available. Check out the labels. Purchase it anywhere you'd like. Like I'm totally fine with that. Um, but you have to know it works. Like we work, uh, well, we run a functional medicine integrated practice all over the world. We have to get people results. That's our job. We, our job is not an Amazon like supplements company. Like that's not what we do. We, our job is to help people. So that's what we do. We help people. And um, those three patented versions, when, when something gets patented, they have the science behind it. Like it has to work. And so that's what we do. It's three different companies, take the patented versions, and it will help you with hair, skin, nail, and like um, uh, joint repair, soft tissue repair. All right? So that's what it does. All right, let's get in one more question. This one, I've been just going long. I apologize on my, on my uh, answers, but I want to make sure we get enough in. So, uh, this one's from Alicia. It says, hi, Dr. Ball. I have a question related to my teeth. I pulled out teeth that have root canals done, and now I have zirconia implants instead. For the first implant, my dentist used cement to attach the crown, and I stopped sleeping for a month after that. For the second implant, to avoid cement, he used a screw and plumber's tape. My sleep stayed good, but I started getting daily headaches. I googled plumber's tape, and it turns out it's Teflon tape made from PTFE. My mind was blown. My headaches went away after two weeks, but I can't make peace with the Teflon tape. Do you think it's safe to have it as long as there is no heat? I like using infrared sauna a few times per week, keeps up to 145. At what temp does PTFE release harmful chemicals? Should I replace the tape with cement? Oh, this is a great question. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's, uh, I don't know, that seems crazy to me that they did that, that they used plumber's tape, but I don't know. I don't know. And this is why I always recommend going to a biological dentist. This is why I always recommend seeing an integrative health practitioner for your health or a naturopathic doctor uh, and going to a biological dentist because you get to choose. Like that's the thing you get to choose. And, but Alicia, you may not know. And so I totally get it. There's a great organization called IAOMT.org and you can find a biological dentist there. Okay. So here's the thing. Um, you go on a sauna and it's 145 degrees. But it's not 145 degrees inside your mouth uh, or inside your body. Like your body's maintaining a pretty good 98.6. And in the sauna, maybe it gets up to like 100 degrees. Maybe if you create a really good internal fever. But um, it's, not getting up, it's not getting up that hot. So I don't know when PTFE releases chemicals at a certain temperature. It's releasing chemicals at any temperature, most likely. Um, but not a high amount, right, unless it's under greater heat. Now, if your headaches went away 
it may have been that all of the chemicals that were going to be released into your system already got released into your system. I personally don't know. Uh, I'm not an expert in, like, honestly, plumber's tape and, and this uh, being released in the body because it's never typically, you know, used inside the body. But um, I don't know. I don't know if it were me because, again, I'm not giving you medical advice. I don't know that if it were me that I would go and have the tooth taken out, have the tape taken out, then go in with the cement again. I don't know. I would ask the dentist, like, when does the tape dissolve, if ever? Right? It's got to dissolve at some point. I'm assuming so. And, you know, look up maybe when does it stop? The chemicals, like, are they already dissolved? Because maybe that's the case. And then, you know, what's done is done. And do a good functional medicine detox for 21 days if possible. And keep doing your sauna and, and you might be good to go. All right. So hopefully that was helpful. All right. I want to get one more because I always have to do at least five. So this is one. It says it's from Alicia again. It says, hi again. My second question is about garlic. Raw garlic is one of the remedies I use when I get sick. Despite lower appetite and eating very little during sickness, I usually get more bloating and lots of white coating in my tongue. Garlic is a natural, it's called natural antibiotic because it can kill bacteria and other pathogens. But it also is rich in prebiotic, right? Uh, maybe rich in prebiotic. So it means it can feed bacteria. Which one is it then? Does garlic feed bacteria or kill them? Thank you for all the amazing work. I listen to your podcast daily and learn so much from you. All right. So um, again, this is, uh, you're right on both accounts. The answer is yes. So it's a natural antibiotic, but again, not medical advice. It's an antibacterial. So not antibiotic, but antibacterial. It's an antimicrobial. It's antifungal. It's antiparasitic. Pretty powerful. In Ayurvedic, they call it, um, well, in Ayurveda, they have three categories of food. And the reason why, you know, that's actually uh, nuanced or important is that Garlic, a rajasic food, is, yes, it's an antimicrobial, uh, antipathogenic, etc., but it's pitta stimulating. So basically, onions and garlic and spices, they're stimulating to the body. So they're actually not considered sattvic foods. So if like you're a yogi and you're trying to calm the body and, and get into deep meditation, you would never use like the onions and the garlics and the chilies and the spices, which they do use in Ayurveda, right? I'm not saying that. So part of the issue is though, it is actually fairly common to get the white coating on the tongue if you're crushing garlic and swallowing it because it does have a, let's call it like a die-off based effect. It has to be digested through the stomach. So it's working on vata and kapha, um, you know, particularly, and that can lead to the white coating because the white coating in the tongue is typically a kapha based um, disorder. So that's not abnormal. I, I have no issues with that happening if you're using it for the right reasons, like when you're not feeling well. And then um, in terms of can it feed bacteria? Yeah, it is. It's actually a prebiotic. It has prebiotic fiber. So the allicin in it um, is different in terms of like how it helps with cholesterol and blood pressure and killing pathogens. But it's a prebiotic that it actually feeds good bacteria. Now, it can feed all bacteria, but it's killing off a lot of the pathogenic bacteria. And nature knows. Like nature is able to do these things amazingly well. I'll be talking about – actually, I just spoke about it yesterday in the podcast on, on my Friday review. An herb – uh, well, it comes actually, it's from a twig on a tree that has actually been shown, scientifically proven, to help with cancer. Again, I'm not making medical claims, just saying that. Um, and how does it know to kill cancer cells but not healthy cells? Uh, nature, amazing, right? Universe, creator, God, I don't know. Like, I don't, I, w I wish I had that wisdom. I don't have that wisdom. I don't know how nature knows, but nature knows. And so I have no problem with that. I use garlic myself. And um, I just want to, again, I can't give you medical advice, but I have no problem with that. Sounds like you're on the right path. Keep up the great work. That is it for today's show. Thanks so much, everybody. I'll be back tomorrow answering more of our community's questions. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.